Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, a channel where you can see the world from a different angle. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification so you will not miss our videos uploaded every week. Today we talk about the reunification between China's mainland and Taiwan, and discuss whether a war is coming to solve the issue permanently. On the eve of China's National Day, President Xi Jinping restated his commitment to reunite with Taiwan. Notably, he avoided using the word peaceful, which sparked the anxiety of Taiwan authorities about whether the mainland would attack the island militarily. President Xi Jinping introduced a new phrase, the complete reunification with the motherland, to illustrate the return of Taiwan. The word complete here means unconditional, meaning Taiwan does not deserve a separate system like that in Hong Kong, and Macau if the reunification is not peaceful. To emphasize his resolution to fulfill the complete reunification of the motherland, Xi Jinping told his audience of thousands at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing, it is an irreversible trend, a cause of righteousness and the common aspiration of the people. No one can stop the march of history. Since Chiang Kai-shek lost the mainland to the communists in 1949, the People's Republic of China has never given up its claim to Taiwan as its own, and it has vowed to reunify with the island, resorting to military strikes if necessary. Seventy-five years have passed since Taiwan became a breakaway province of China, and some people on the island do not view themselves as Chinese, but distinctly Taiwanese. If Beijing cannot achieve reunification with the island shortly, it will be more difficult for the island to return to its motherland. Whether the Chinese admit it or not, the two sides across the Taiwan Strait have been apart since 1949, and most communist leaders, including Chairman Mao and his high-rank subordinates, never set their feet on the soil of the island. On October 1, 1949, the communists founded the People's Republic of China, while the overthrown nationalists fled to Taiwan under the name of the Republic of China. All Chinese leaders of various generations, from Chair Mao to President Xi Jinping have vowed to reunite with Taiwan. In recent years, President Xi Jinping has lost his patience, particularly with the DPP leader's constant rhetoric against the mainland, and a reunification war is looming if the new Taiwan leader does not refrain from provoking Beijing with his Taiwan independence remarks. President Xi asserted at the National Day Banquet, addressing over 3,000 people, Taiwan is China's sacred territory. Blood is thicker than water, and people on both sides of the strait are connected by blood. He encourages deeper economic and cultural exchanges across the Taiwan Strait, and promotes spiritual harmony of compatriots on both sides. He also calls for people on both sides of the strait to oppose Taiwan independence, separatist activities headed by the dangerous separatist Lai ching -te. Since the new Taiwan leader's inauguration in May, during which he emphasized Beijing and Taiwan do not belong to each other and Taiwan is already an independent country, tension has worsened to the highest level. On September 29, 2024, Taiwan detected multiple waves of missiles fired by the Chinese rocket force in Inner Mongolia, Gansu, Qinghai and Xinjiang, and its ministry stated that Taiwan's air defense forces have maintained a high level of vigilance and strengthened their alert. It is worth mentioning that even the United States is not confident whether it can intercept China's missiles, what can Taiwan's defense forces do if the target of those missiles is Taiwan? In a previous video, we introduced China's first international test of its intercontinental ballistic missile into the Pacific Ocean ever in its history. Viewers who have not watched that video can search and watch it on our channel. China used a language, which the US and its allies understand, to send a warning to those countries hostile to China, amid heightened regional tensions. Till today, the United States and its allies rarely kept a low profile, and expressed their will to sit down and talk with China after Beijing's ICBM test. The new Japanese Prime Minister, Shigeru Ishiba, delivered his first speech on October 4, 2024, telling his audience that he would respect China's core interests and cooperate with China in all areas. Taiwan is one of China's core interests and no external interference will be tolerated. Japan and the US are the two main external forces that mislead Taiwan's independence elements convincing them they are not alone in a potential confrontation with China's mainland. As we said in the previous video, the US has not deployed an aircraft carrier in the West Pacific for almost half a year since the USS Reagan left Japan in May 2024, which is rare in the past eight decades. 
The Chinese aircraft carriers, however, continue to patrol the waters in that region. Even Japan realized that America's influence in the region was diminishing, and the new Japanese leader wanted to station the Japanese army in the U.S. To make things worse, the conflicts in Europe and the Middle East have drained America's energy, making it improbable for the U.S. to counterbalance China in East Asia. U.S. think tanks have made dozens of deductions that the U.S. should not involve itself in a hopeless war with China in the Taiwan Strait as it cannot beat China there. For China, Taiwan is its core interest, and no Chinese leader will risk his political life and national dignity to allow Taiwan to become independent. In the early 1950s, U.S. President Harry Truman decided to give up Taiwan, but the Korean War changed its mind. Since then, America's Seventh Fleet has become a main barrier for China to recover the island. The Taiwan issue is a focal point of dissent between Beijing and Washington, and in the past 75 years, both sides have kept the status quo till today, when China's mainland is gradually winning the upper hand. The U.S. will not send its soldiers as cannon fodder to defend Taiwan's so-called democracy, but it is also unwilling to allow Beijing to take over the island. It constantly sends its warships to sail through the Taiwan Strait and coerces its allies, like Canada, Germany, Japan, Australia and New Zealand, to flex their muscles in the waterway with their warships. China is angry but refrains itself from taking radical actions. Instead, it tested its ICBM with a dummy warhead internationally in late September 2024, as a warning to countries involved. Taiwan is never America's core interest, but an ATM to withdraw cash. Donald Trump threatens Taiwan to pay more protection fees, and even if he cannot win the election, the new U.S. president will follow Biden's suit, selling antiqued weapons and excessively overpriced services to Taiwan's independence elements. On September 29, 2024, Joe Biden approved an additional $567 million in military support for Taiwan. In a statement published the same day on the White House website, Biden said he authorized up to $567 million in defense items, services, and military training for the island. China denounced Washington for providing over half a million dollars to the Chinese breakaway province. Its foreign ministry spokesman said at the regular press briefing on September 30, 2024, let me be clear, Taiwan independence separatism is a dead end, and what the U.S. has done to assist the Taiwan independence attempt by arming Taiwan will only backfire. Even if the Taiwan leader knows the U.S. wants Taiwan to become another Ukraine to weaken China's mainland, he claims Taiwan to be an independent country from Beijing, saying Taipei and Beijing do not belong to each other. He says he will not sign a peace treaty with Beijing, meaning he would like to resort to force in case of an incursion from the other side of the Taiwan Strait. In mid-June 2024, two weeks after the Chinese People's Liberation Army finished its two-day military drill around the island, Lai ching said only military strength can keep peace with Beijing, and the Taiwanese people will not give in to China's coercion. He made such an aggressive remark because on June 5, 2024, the U.S. announced a $300 million arms sale, providing F-16 standard and non-standard spare and repair parts to the island. The F-16 Fighting Falcon was first introduced in 1978, and it is almost 50 years old. Taiwan can't gain air superiority over the People's Liberation Army with such granny warplanes. China's mainland, with its hypersonic missiles, five-generation stealth fighters, aircraft carriers, and so on, is 100 times more potent than it was 75 years ago, and no other country, including the U.S., can beat it at its doorstep. Beijing no longer emphasizes peaceful reunification with Taiwan, and it has realized that peace cannot bring forth reunification and military strength might be the only solution when emergencies happen. However, the Chinese central government may not want to take over the island immediately. Instead, it is willing to wait and see. Only one-third of voters on the island support the DPP government, meaning most people are against Taiwan's independence, even if some of them are hesitant to admit they are Chinese. Beijing can use other means than military strikes, like economic measures, to let Taiwan feel the pain. Unless Taiwan declares independence, forceful reunification will not be the first choice. Beijing is cautious as it does not want the U.S. and its allies to entrap it in a situation like Russia in Ukraine. From the viewpoint of military strength, 
Beijing can solve the Taiwan issue easily. However, the U.S. has long internationalized the Taiwan issue, and if China's mainland takes over the island by force, the U.S. will coerce its allies to sanction China. China has 1.4 billion people to feed, and it is not an easy task. Someone may say the world needs China's reasonably priced commodities, but China also needs the world market to create enough jobs for its nationals. Getting Taiwan back by force will give the U.S. and its allies an excuse to sanction China in the name of defending the so-called democracy, although only around 30 percent of the people on the island support the ruling party. As China's largest island, Taiwan is about 5 percent bigger than China's second-largest island, Hainan. In 1950, half a year after the founding of the People's Republic of China, the People's Liberation Army took over Hainan Island from the Nationalist Party, and the battle lasted two months only. Today's Taiwan is not stronger than yesterday's Hainan Island, if we compare Beijing's rising military power with Taiwan's passive defense. Taiwan's so-called military strength, with or without America's support, cannot keep peace with Beijing. The two players across the Taiwan Strait are always the US and China's mainland. Certainly, Beijing will not sign any peace treaty, truce, or ceasefire agreements with Taipei, and the civil war between the sides will not end until they finally reunite. President Xi Jinping did not emphasize peaceful reunification with the island this time, but it does not mean he will resort to force shortly to take over Taiwan. However, he and his army are ready to recover the island if the new Taiwan leader dares to announce independence, which is least likely as his boss, the United States, will not allow him.